Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I have, I think this, I, I think it's a very useful lesson because I think this is something that when it comes to entertainment, people might hear a lot of these words. So in general, what we're talking about today is like, well, crime and punishment vocabulary. So I've kind of separated this lesson into three different parts. Kind of the, the first part at the beginning would be more related to like when, when maybe a crime happens. And then I have some vocabulary related more to law enforcement. And then finally, like once you get into the courtroom. So like I said, if you are somebody who likes watching TV shows that have like crime or mystery, these are actually words that I think you will hear quite often. So this is very useful, useful vocabulary that I think it's, it's good to know. So the way I'm going to present this is like a little bit like a quiz because I want you to participate and see if you can write your answers in the chat. Even if you're watching this later, I would like you to write your answers in the comments. I, I just want to hear from you. And what I'm going to do, um, I, I'll probably end up going through this a bit quickly. So here's the first one that I have for you. And this is just asking like, well, what are the three basic classifications of criminal offenses? And I know this can be a little bit challenging, but I think when I show you the answer, hopefully that you are familiar with some of these words. Now, the other thing I will say is that this lesson, because I'm from the United States, some of the information that I'm giving you is going to be specific to the United States. Again, these are things that you might hear in a movie or TV show. So any, any guesses about the three basic classifications of a criminal offense? What do you think? Now, I'll go ahead and show you the answer and then we're gonna kind of get into it because I think when you see these words, hopefully you recognize some of them. So in general, we're talking about like, it goes from like number one, which is the least severe to number three, which is the most severe. So the first one would be like um, an infraction. If there is an infraction, it's kind of just like a minor offense. So an infraction might just be something like um, maybe uh, jaywalking or you get a speeding ticket, something like that. That would be an infraction. A misdemeanor would be something a little more serious. Perhaps a misdemeanor could be like you, you steal clothes from a store. And then a felony, that is going to be the most severe type of criminal offense, which would include things like murder. So these in general are the three basic classifications, but also these are good words to know. Let's move in to the next part, which is these are all types of crimes. So what I'm doing right here is I'm describing the crime to you and I want you to tell me the word. What is the word that is this type of crime? So the first one is the crime of intentionally starting a fire in order to damage or destroy something. What do we call that crime? So I have several of these for you where I'm talking about types of crimes. Again, this is vocabulary that you may come across, especially in, in TV shows or movies, all right? What do you think? Write your answers in the chat. Even if you're watching this later, write your answers, uh, write your answers in the comments. I just love hearing from you. And especially if this is your first time here, please let me know. Tell me your name, tell me where you're from. So if we're talking about, I think one of the, the key words in this one is fire, all right? You, you hear that word fire. And if you're talking about a crime, you may be talking about arson, all right? Arson is the crime of, of starting a fire. You're trying to damage some property, tr destroy something, and you might commit arson, all right? The next one, um, all right, Mon Mon, got it, excellent. The next one is giving money or granting favors to influence another person's decisions or their behavior. So what, what would you call that, okay? This, again, is a crime, but this is also something that you, I mean, you could use in other contexts as well. You could do this 
with your your friends or your family members. You're trying to again, you're you you may be doing giving favors in order to influence their their decision or their behavior. It is called excellent um, Vishwa Sleepwalker Adele bribery. We're talking about bribery again. This this is uh, this is a crime. Yes. Uh, the next one, excellent. You guys got that one. This um, is talking is just killing a killing another person on purpose. The act of murder. There is one word. It kind of it it means this, and this definitely is a word that. I think you will hear in movies and TV shows the people that are trying to solve um, these murders, they may work in this department. And maybe this department has the name. Yes, Salim, you got it. So once I get the answer, I'm just going to give it to you all. Uh, Takaya, perfect. Homicide. So you, like I said, in a movie or TV show, you might hear somebody say like, oh, I work in homicide. And that means they work in this department where they're trying to perhaps solve murders and find out what happened. So a, if you say there, there was a homicide, they're talking about there was a murder. The next one is just simply stealing something from a store, okay? So... If this is if this is what you do, whether you're stealing like clothes or electronics, you're taking it from a store, then you are doing this. What is it that, that you are doing? What is the word? And again, this is a crime. This is probably a, more of a misdemeanor, um, kind of a, a middle crime. I, Theft, yes, uh, but the word, the actual crime, excellent. We're talking about shoplifting, all right? Stealing something from a store, uh, I was going for shoplifting. Then we have stealing large amounts of money that you are often responsible for, and typically people would do this like over a period of time, um, okay? So this is probably a crime that might happen more in the context of like a company, a business, and somebody is responsible for a large amount of money. And if they're stealing it, typically over a longer period of time, what is that called? You, it, it is a noun. I think oftentimes people will use this word as a verb. You'll, you'll, you'll likely hear it as a verb most of the time, I think. All right, excellent, good job, uh, Yashar, Adele, Victor. Um, we're talking about embezzlement. So embezzlement is the noun. This is a crime. I said often you might hear it as a verb like to embezzle, like somebody was embezzling money. Then we have, moving right along. Okay, this is a good one. Lying in court while under oath. All right, what, what crime is that? And this, yeah, if you are in court, and you are called upon to give testimony and talk about something you before you before you start talking you have to you have to take an oath that you're going to tell the truth and if it comes back that you were lying well then you could well you could be in trouble um, because that is a crime and that crime has a specific name what is it called if you're lying in court while under oath Anybody know it? <laughs> Felony? Oh, Muffin got it. Victor, yes, Sleepwalker. Perjury, all right? And I think people might hear, you might use this with the verb to commit. Somebody committed perjury, all right? And basically they were, in that case, they were caught lying when you commit perjury. So perjury is the crime. Very good, you guys rock that one. The next one, uh, okay, so those were all types of crimes. Now I wanna get into other vocabulary. And the way I've done this is like with person A, person B. Uh-oh, wait a second. Oh no, I <laughs> gave you guys the answer. I skipped ahead, all right? So maybe if you saw that, still bear with me and we'll talk our way through this. So this is the situation. Person A saw someone rob a store and described the thief to the police. The police then picked up person B. So what might you call these people, all right? Person A would be what? And person B 
would be what? What would you call these people? Again, this is vocabulary related to crime, but these are these are all people that you would uh, that you would be describing. So we're not talking about types of crimes. We're talking about people. Okay. So I showed you guys the answer. The key word when you think of person A would be saw. Okay. So you're talking about somebody seeing something which means they would be exactly sleepwalker a witness and then the police picked up person b so when i say pick up this is a phrasal verb that means well they they maybe they arrested this person they want to ask them questions and they arrested this person because they would think that person b is the suspect okay so person a is a witness they saw the crime person b is the suspect it's the person that they believe committed the crime, all right? Now I have a couple more for you. I'm not going to give you the, the answers uh, to begin with this one. So now I've, I've kind of continued the situation. A witness saw someone rob a store and described the thief to the police. The police then picked up a suspect, all right? The police believe the suspect may have received help from person C. However... The suspect tells the police he cannot be the thief because he was with person D at that time. All right. What might you call person C and person D? Okay. What do you guys think? Uh, again, so we talked about a witness, a suspect, and these other two names. Again, these are the names of, um, well, this is vocabulary that would talk about people. And these people have a specific meaning that goes with it. I said a witness is a person who sees the crime. Suspect is the person you think maybe committed the crime. Person C, if somebody receives help from somebody else, uh, exactly, person C is an accomplice. And the suspect says, well, no, no, it couldn't be, with me. It couldn't be me. I was with person D. Person D would be their alibi. So again, these are other words to describe people. An accomplice is somebody who may help you commit a crime. And an alibi would be the person would be like, well, I didn't do it. You can talk to this person. I was with them. This other person is your alibi. It's the person who can say, yes, the, this per they could not commit the crime because they were with me. They would be the alibi. All right. So now let's uh, let's get back into the, the that was all talking about like the crime, types of crimes and um, some of those uh, other people. Now let's talk about a little bit more with law enforcement. All right. So here, uh, just just some general questions. All right. Police will try to arrest the criminals. All right. Now thinking about vocabulary, thinking about synonyms that you may hear in this context, talking about um, crime and stuff like that. What's another word for arrest? All right. What do you think? What's another word for arrest? So we could take this word and put it in for arrest and it has the, the same meaning. Police will try to arrest the criminals. All right. Um, <laughs> see some words like uh, capture, bus, take into custody. Sure. The, the word that I was looking for um, is apprehend. To apprehend is to kind of, to, to well, it is to, to capture somebody and typically like we'll bring them in for, for questioning. So to arrest, to apprehend. I think again, apprehend is another common verb that you will hear in this context talking about that. Um, let's, uh, look at the next one. Police need to obtain a, mm in order to enter and search a premises. What is it that police would need to get? Again, these are, this is, um, I'll, I'll actually give you a hint. This is a phrase. All right. So it's two words. So this phrase again is very common. Um, I think the, this is something you will hear all the time if you're watching a movie or TV show. I really hope that none of you have to actually deal with this vocabulary in real life. I hope that you don't have to uh, have trouble with the police or law enforcement. Uh, so, yes, exactly. Yashar, uh, Entienne, um, 
Victor. We're talking about a warrant. Specifically, I think you could say a search warrant was, was I mentioned, it's a phrase. Um, so police need to obtain a search warrant in order to enter and search a premises. A premises is just talking about some area, maybe a building, and you need a warrant, but specifically like a search warrant so that you can enter and look around. Uh, the next one, this is where I said, I think it, this is more specific to the United States. So after placing a suspect under arrest, the officer, the police officer will say, you, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. Okay, so when the officer is saying that, they're basically telling the person what? What is that called? That, that whole phrase when people say that. Um, it's, again, I'm sure just hearing me reading this, you may, it may sound familiar if you've uh, listened to it already in a TV show or movie. Um, all right, so you know, it says rights, but what, what specific rights are we talking about? So they are, they are a person's rights, but this phrase in particular has a specific name to it. Um, so rights would be kind of vague, but what specifically are these rights? All right. Uh, the answer, and if you don't know this, this is, uh, this is good, your Miranda rights. So typically this would be called a Miranda warning. The police are giving a Miranda warning and they're telling this to the suspect but the, the suspect has these rights that they can, they can stay silent and they have the right to an attorney. That is their rights and that is their Miranda rights. It's called Miranda because this was an old case, I think a long time ago that went to court and I don't think the police were doing this at that time. And ever since then, police will always use this and they'll say this phrase and therefore it's called um, somebody's Miranda rights. Then we have <laughs> this one, this is just a, a random word. Um, I think Miranda was the name of a person too. Like I said, this was a case that I believe went to the Supreme Court and they ruled down that yes, police have to tell suspects this information. This is their Miranda rights. The someone who takes the law into their own hands is referred to as a what? All right, what would you call that person? who they're, maybe they don't call the police. They are going to try to solve the problem. They're gonna take the law into their own hands, not something that I would recommend, but you might refer to this person as a mm. And to give you one further hint, to think of like a, a word that might be associated with uh, someone else, uh, think of Batman. I think Batman has been used to people would describe that man as a what? They take the law into their own hands. Uh, Nilifer, excellent, that was good. Um, Marius, we're talking about a vigilante. So a vigilante is somebody who, well, yeah, they don't call the police, they try to take the, um, the law into their own hands. You also may hear it used with the word justice. And when somebody does that, they might say, oh, well, that's vigilante justice, that, saying that it's not right, um, that people should not be doing this. Then we have this one. This is an acronym, okay? A DUI is a common misdemeanor in the United States. What does DUI stand for? So as I mentioned, this is a pretty common, it's a, it's a common misdemeanor. So it's a common acronym that people will use if they've been in this situation. Maybe, um, uh, you know, somebody has gotten one before and you get a DUI. What does, what does this stand for? It, what does this acronym stand for? So I don't wanna give you too many hints with this one because I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like it'll make it too easy. Uh, Pablo, you nailed it. Perfect. We're talking about a DUI stands for driving under the influence, driving under the influence. And in general, when you say influence, 
you'd be talking about some kind of substance. So it could be um, drugs or alcohol. Most of the time it's alcohol related and you get a DUI. Um, and that, that, that's basically, it's used in conversation. Most people are not going to say driving, I, 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 I got a ticket driving under the influence. Most people would say, I got a DUI. They would just say, I got a DUI. So let's now talk about some, let's, so we started out with talking about some crimes and then law enforcement. Now let's move into the courtroom, all right? So we're kind of following that process. So here's more vocabulary that would be related to the courtroom. This is, I, I'm trying to make it a little easier. I'm giving you um, <laughs> multiple choice now. A mm is an order for someone to appear in court. What is it? A, a plea, B, a subpoena, or C, a warrant. Which one of those is an order that would compel a person to appear in court. And they would get a what? What would you call it? All right. So you guys, I think most of you, I, I think most of you are probably familiar with this. Again, it's a very common word. It's a subpoena. The answer is B. Excellent. I think a lot of you got that one. A subpoena is an order for someone to appear in court. So... Then we have, okay, this one hopefully, hopefully is not too difficult because there's only two choices. The lawyer against the accused is called the what? So basically, if you're talking about a courtroom, you have, well, two sides, all right? And you have a judge, of course, who is going to possibly make a decision and you have two sides which means you have two lawyers. One is a prosecutor and one is the defense. All right, so we're talking about the lawyer against the accused is called the excellent, uh, all right, perfect, uh, Mohammed, Pablo Karim, Angela Yashar, Dave, I'm just trying to throw out some names. Good job, Vianette, Jane, uh, Angela, Vakir, Mohammed. Jim, we, we're talking about the prosecutor. The answer is A, the lawyer against the accused is the prosecutor. So I think a lot of these TV shows and movies, they happen, they take place in the courtroom. And again, this is a word that you're gonna hear very often. You're talking about a specific lawyer, the prosecutor. This one is more, again, specific to the United States. In court, if someone refuses to answer questions, because the answers might be harmful to them or might show that they have committed a crime, then they are pleading the what, all right? Is the answer A, fourth, B, fifth, or C, sixth, okay? What do you think, all right? What are you going to plead? And this is, I've given you the situation. Um, I've given you the situation. What are they going to plead? The fourth, the fifth, or the sixth? I noticed that some of you had already uh, mentioned this in one of the previous questions. Excellent. The answer is B, yes. You are going to plead the fifth. And again, I so told you that this is more specific to the United States, to plead the fifth, which is your right not to incriminate yourself. Then we have, okay. A lawyer might say that unsubstantiated information or rumor is what? Okay, we're running through these. What do you think? Unsubstantiated information or rumor, is that circumstantial? Is it extenuating? Is it hearsay? Or is it proof? What do you guys think? You guys are, I don't know, maybe it's a, a, a much easier to be doing the multiple choice. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully this one's a little more challenging. What do you think? A, B, C, or D? So maybe this one could be a little more challenging, but if you're talking about unsubstantiated information, which basically means that you, you cannot verify if this information is true, which essentially means it's kind of a rumor, 
Or you could say in the court of law, you would maybe the lawyer would say, this is hearsay. So hearsay is just referring to unsubstantiated information or rumor, hearsay. Good word to know. Uh, all right, so I wanted to review, we went through 20 of them. Um, these are the, the words that we talked about. We talked started with those classifications, talked about those people and then those types of crimes. If you are a member or patron, I will put, um, I'm going to put these, uh, these notes up on there for you guys. So here we talked about law enforcement and then the courtroom. Uh, again, this is great vocabulary to know, especially if you like you end up watching movies or TV shows in which a crime is committed. I think there are many shows out there that are crime related. And these are words that you're going to hear quite often because they involve the police, they involve criminals, and they involve the courtroom as well. So as I mentioned, if you guys like what we do, want to show us some love, uh, you can sponsor or support us with a YouTube membership or join Patreon. There are links down below in the description. And I just want to thank you guys for joining me. I Like with all of these lessons, my the ultimate goal is I hope that you learned something new. If you did learn something new, please hit that like button. Let me know. Um, it tells me that oh, maybe I should do some more lessons like this in the future. So if you learn some new words and phrases, please hit that like button. Write to me in the comments. I love hearing from you. And I just hope that uh, you guys join, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. So thank you guys. Um, Muffin, Sleepwalker, uh, Mohammed, <laughs> sorry you showed up late. It's going to get posted. You'll be able to watch, take the whole quiz and learn all these words. Uh, Angela, Yashar, Luca, uh, Hisma, Alex, Rod, good to see you. Uh, Mon Mon, Alex. Uh, oh, it's a little hard. Okay, that's good. I then a lot of these, hopefully these words and phrases were new because like I said, these, this is pretty common stuff if you're watching those shows and movies. I, I wasn't just pulling like random words that you'll never hear. Um, thank you, Rod. I appreciate that. Congrats on the 400,000. Yes, that's a, that was a good milestone for the channel. Uh, Takayo, good to see you. Glad you enjoyed the lesson. Nekla, uh, teacher Nay, Jane. Abdul Rashid, Justina, uh, Demos, Arian, Rayuk, sorry if I mispronounced names, um, Nilafar, Bakir, Mohammed, Angela. Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you next.